Okay, for this portion of the build we are going to start with the end caps. The idea behind this uh, part of the build is that we're going to take the stepper motor and mount it to the end cap with the pulley inside of it. So, um, before we even get started with that, one of the things that we're going to need to do is make sure that our pulley uh, will fit on our stepper motor. If not, you might have to take some fine sandpaper and knock that down a little bit. But basically, it needs to slide on easy and off. Um, make sure your set screws aren't in the way, of course. But just make sure that you, you can do this right here. And that way you won't have any problems because what we're going to be doing is working with it inside of this gap. So, it's, you know, you're also going to need your 1.5, 2.5, and your 5 millimeter hex drivers. So we'll just go ahead and do it. Uh, the part layout is that we need the four 30 millimeters screws, M4 screws, M3 screws, sorry. The four aluminum spacers. You're going to need four of the double T-nuts and your six millimeter M5 screws, your pulley, your stepper, and your end cap. All right, so Starting off, you want to make sure that your wire orientation coming out of the stepper motor is where you want it. For me, I want it to be facing the bottom of this of this uh, end cap. So, before I even put this in here, I want to look for the flat part of the stepper. I'm just going to face that up towards me and slide that in a little bit. I'm going to take my pulley with the uh, set screws facing towards the stepper kind of using I know you, it's gonna be tough to see let me see something here. just pinching my fingers together like this I'm gonna slide it on here I'm just gonna leave that loose right now go ahead and slide one of the bolts through take your aluminum spacer put it on there and I'm just gonna not even going to tighten that all the way down because I need to have room to get the other ones in as well. So go ahead and just work all four of these. Okay, so I have those in. It's real loose, but um, that's fine. And tighten these down. Now I don't want to over tighten these. Okay, so the rest of these have this, you know, solid backing and the solid bent area here so you can kind of tighten those down a little more than you would the other one but you still may need to loosen these two anyway I'm going to actually leave this one a little bit loose because when you go to put the extrusion in here the v-slot you're going to have to separate them as well so let's move on to tightening down the pulley you can see that or not I'm not sure but the idea here is just tighten down these set screws. Looks pretty well centered. If I have to, I can move it out later. The other thing to consider is using the double T-nut, which we normally use this, has a couple different functions. But in this case, since our holes are 20 millimeters apart, we can also use them to make threaded inserts for mounting to in here as well as on the bottom or on these side pieces here which uh, makes life a lot easier when you're when you're doing this build so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in hold it there with my fingers and I have the uh, M5 6 millimeter screw and I'll do the other side over here at the top same way now you'll notice you don't want to tighten all the you don't want to tighten these down all the way because once again we have to be able to slide the V slot onto them so you just want it loose just a couple turns so you want that gap in there because when we go to slide the V slot on there it has to go into the gap there that pretty much takes care of the end cap build at this point, except you actually have to put uh, two more here of the double T-nut and four more screws, and that would take care of it. But let's go ahead, since we have it here and we have the extrusion here, 
let's go ahead and slide this on. I'm going to slide that all the way up till it hits the back here. And make sure you're flush and square on the bottom. And then you can tighten these down. Finish tightening these in. They don't have to be super tight. Okay, so that gives you um, a really strong mount, especially when, once you have all these in here. You can see if I bring in the, the little Mini V carriage plate, how now we can mount, we could put some screws up through the bottom here, mount right to a double T nut, and now we have a system that can ride like this or it can mount like this. It's just uh, unlimited possibilities. You can also mount these like this um, onto the carriage. The, and you'll see the 3D model examples. Um, but one of the things I forgot to do was I actually need to run my belt through this first. I could and probably will attempt to just feed my belt through here right now. I'm going to take my timing belt and I'm going to feed it in through the bottom here with the teeth facing up or not the bottom through the center hole here of this 20 by 40 and it's going to be tough to see in here but I can see that the belt is in there you know the plan is to just take a pair of needle nose and grab it if this was a longer run you would definitely want to take this end cap off you can kind of get an idea of how that is supposed to go in there and you can see that it goes on the inside of all these screws you don't want the belt on top of these screws I'm actually going to pull this back a little bit you know and kind of split the difference and then what we'll do is we'll work on the opposite end end cap and that will give us the ability to put the smooth idler pulley on here and then we can complete the gantry so let's move on to that step okay for this step we're going to be installing the free idler pulley end cap we're going to be building it I should say we're installing the smooth idler in the end cap here and that will complete the belt loop so you need to locate your smooth idler your end cap of course uh, one of the M5 nuts the 30, 30 millimeter M5 bolt, uh, the quarter inch spacer, and the eighth inch spacer. And you also may want to grab a pair of needle nose for this step. We'll start with the bolt, put it through, and we're going to start with the quarter inch spacer. See if I can get that on without the needle nose. Okay, so it looks like that so far. Go ahead and put the Smooth idler. And be careful not to push the bearings out. That looks good. And just leave yourself a little bit of the screw sticking out of the end here, which I know you probably can't see on the camera, but there is a little bit hanging out there. And that's enough for me to grab this um, eighth inch spacer, stick it on there, and then push the screw through a little bit more or all the way. And that will capture this right in, right where we want it, in the center. And it's loose, which is what you want. You want it to be able to move. Let that belt find where it needs to be. And tighten that down. Now don't smush this on there because um, we still have to put this in the extrusion. You don't want to squish it. All right. That will work. Now, at this point, you're going to put your 6 millimeter screws in these holes along with your double T-nuts facing left to right like this and we'll go ahead and do that now so we have the double T-nuts with our six millimeter screws we're going to go ahead and install that now once again I'm only going to be putting two of these on for demonstration but you, you want to put all four of them Okay, that looks pretty good. 
Now let's bring our actuator back in. And why I have it out like this, I'm going to go ahead and thread the belt through. And you have to pry these apart a little bit. It's a little too tight. So let's loosen these up a bit. Push that in until it hits. Tighten that up. Now the whole time I'm tightening this up, I'm keeping it pressed down too to keep it flush. One of the things I did not mention, since we're using the double here, we're covering up this bottom. If you wanted to put the double T-nuts in here to thread to, or if you wanted screws coming out here, you might want to go ahead and mount this plate to, or this end cap, to an existing plate before you actually uh, tighten all this up. Otherwise you have to go back in and do it. Now these side ones, you could probably do. It would be hard to get the driver down in there, but you might as well go ahead and just mount these on before we actually put this on if you were going to do that. So, and just for this demonstration, I'm just building this one, so. Uh, another thing that I did not mention or did not do is I forgot to put my card on. So that's something we need to do. I'm going to back this one off and go ahead and put the card on now. When you install the cart, you know, of course, make sure that even though they look like they're the same distance between these two wheel sets, they're not. You have to pay attention to where the eccentric spacers are in comparison to the regular spacer because between them is where the rail actually rides. So it's going to be like this. You can also look at the um, belt mounting holes as well. Now, another thing. Um, just to keep in mind is you could if you wanted to at this point move this over go ahead and push your belt through here so you don't have to deal with it later do the same thing on this side if it lets me if I get enough room here let's see if I can go ahead and slide that on there we go now once I push this in we'll have plenty of room as well. So let me do that now. It's pretty good. Now you can see where we're at at this point. Practically done. And once you get the hang of these, these will go together really quick. Which is awesome because the more of these you have, the more uh, crazy your builds can get. Because they all interconnect. So, let's go ahead and take this out of the track here, pull it down, I left myself a good amount to work with because there's nothing worse than trying to build something like this and then you get to this point in the game and you're working with a little tiny quarter inch piece here. But this is what we're after here and at this point you have the option of utilizing a crimp style belt clamp which you know once the teeth are engaged here you can go ahead and squish this on now you have to pay attention too you don't want this to go on sideways and crimp it like this you actually want it to go like this. See if I can get a close up of that. Okay, so I'm going to use this on this side. Just to give an example, I'll do two different ones. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to take a pair of channel locks and just kind of work this around and crimp it back on itself. See here I got one side smushed in there. Now I'm just going to fold this one over top of it. And that looks sweet. I just like the look of that silver. Take a pair of scissors and cut it off.
Okay, and on this side, we're going to use our just standard um, zip tie. Doesn't look as nice, but it should get the job done. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the zip tie ones is you want this this area here facing out of the way of the track, just out of the way in general. Let's cut this excess off here. Oops. And I like to put two of these on. Make sure your teeth are engaged. Now at this point, um, our belt is loose and tension this up quick and dirty. All we have to do is pull the one of these um, caps out a little bit. So I'm going to loosen this a little bit and tension that up and that's good but if uh, you were doing a longer run you'd probably want to add a tensioner okay so there is the complete mini B linear actuator it's a uh, inexpensive super strong all aluminum components linear actuator and you can mount to this plate and uh, pretty much any way you can think of with this mounting pattern you can also mount of course to the v-slot itself anywhere as well as to these end caps which opens up a lot of a lot of doors and being creative and connecting these together in various configurations to create all types of different machines make sure you check out the models where we've done some examples for you to look at and kind of get some ideas from. Um, other than that, go ahead and build a few of these and hook them together to create something really cool. Thanks for watching.